Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network. Welcome to The Health Advocates, a podcast that breaks down major health news of the week to help you make sense of it all. I'm Stephen Newmark, Chief Policy Officer at the Global Healthy Living Foundation. Our goal is to help you understand what's happening in the healthcare world to help you make informed decisions to live your best life. We're past July 4th, and we're past the big beautiful bill or the big ugly bill, depending on your view, as that is now law. But even with that behind us, a lot is happening that matters to patients. This week's episode is a loaded roundup of major health stories that could reshape vaccine policy, preventive care, and public health trust as we know it. We're diving into a lawsuit against Health Secretary Robert F. Kennedy Jr., record high measles cases in the U.S., an update on bird flu, and a quietly canceled meeting that should have all of us paying attention. Let's get into it. All right. The first big story is, frankly, unprecedented. Six of the country's leading medical groups, along with a pregnant physician, are suing HHS Secretary Robert F. Kennedy over his changes to COVID-19 vaccine recommendations. Why are they suing? Because they say those changes were made unlawfully and without input from the CDC or the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, ACIP, the panel of experts that typically guides federal vaccine decisions. In other words, RFK Jr. overrode the science and the process. Let's be clear, this isn't just a legal scuffle between doctors and the administration. This is about who gets to decide vaccine policy in this country and whether we're going to let politics displace decades of medical expertise and public trust. The CDC, by the way, currently has no acting director. That vacuum at the top isn't just symbolic. It has real consequences for public health, coordination, and credibility. When you sideline career scientists and silence advisory panels, you're not just breaking norms, you're eroding the foundation that public health depends on. Trust, transparency, and evidence. Meanwhile, while leadership fumbles at the top, top vaccine-preventable diseases are creeping back in. The U.S. has recorded more than 1,200 measles cases across 38 states in D.C., the highest annual number since 2000, when measles was declared eliminated here. Let me say that again, eliminated. That means gone, eradicated through vaccination. So what changed? Two words, vaccine hesitancy. According to the CDC, about 92% of the people infected with measles this year were either unvaccinated or had unknown vaccination statuses. These aren't isolated pockets. This is a national regression. Measles is one of the most contagious diseases we know of, It's not something you want bouncing around your community, let alone schools, daycares, or hospitals. The fact that it's resurging in 2025 is not a failure of medicine. It's a failure of communication, public policy, and political courage. It's not a coincidence that this is happening while vaccine misinformation is spreading like wildfire. And once again, it's patients, especially immunocompromised people and young children who will bear the brunt. So let's pivot to something slightly less alarming, the one that's still worth tracking. The CDC recently announced it's ending its emergency response to the H5N1 bird flu outbreak. They'll now monitor it through regular flu surveillance instead of emergency protocols. Why the change? Animal infections have declined and no human cases have been reported in the US since February. That's good news. Actually, that's great news. So far, there's been no confirmed person-to-person transmission in the United States, which is typically what triggers a broader concern. This, by the way, is how a functioning public health system should work. Identify the risk, monitor it closely, and scale the response up or down as needed. Still, H5N1 is not something we can totally ignore at this point. The virus continues to circulate in poultry and livestock globally, and the concern is that it could mutate in a way that jumps more easily to humans. But for now, it's being managed appropriately, and we'll keep our eye on it. Last up, a story that flew under the radar but should not have. HHS Secretary Robert F. Kennedy, there he is again, abruptly canceled a scheduled meeting of the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force. This is the group that makes evidence-based recommendations on what kinds of screenings and preventive care Americans should get. These are things like mammograms, colonoscopies, HIV prevention drugs like PrEP. The cancellation comes less than two weeks after the Supreme Court ruled that the HHS Secretary has the authority to appoint or remove members of this panel a decision that stemmed from a case brought by conservative Christian employers who didn't want to cover PrEP in their insurance plans. So what's the concern? That RFK Jr. may now try to fire the current experts and stack the panel with ideologically aligned figures, people who may put politics ahead of public health. This could mean that some services currently covered under the Affordable Care Act could end up costing patients more money. He didn't give a reason for canceling the meeting, but silence can speak volumes. 
And for many researchers and patient advocates, this move signals a shift that could affect preventive care for millions. Before we wrap up, I want to let you know that season two of our podcast series, Let's Get Personal, just launched. This season takes a closer look at the rheumatoid factor test, a key blood test used in diagnosing and managing RA. The first episode, entitled Understanding Rheumatoid Factor in RA, Insights from Dr. Ted Michaels, is out now. Dr. Michaels breaks down what the rheumatoid factor levels really mean, how the test works, and how it fits into your RA diagnosis and treatment decisions. So make sure to tune in. We'll have a link to the episode for you in the episode description. So what are we watching this week? Legal challenges to vaccine policy, rising measles cases, an evolving bird flu landscape, and a preventive care panel in limbo. It's a lot, and it all points to one theme. When you compromise the independence of public health institutions, patients lose, but there's still time to push back. Talk to your networks about what's happening. Share this podcast. Ask your elected officials how they plan to protect evidence-based policy. And most important, stay informed and stay engaged. Thanks for listening to The Health Advocates, a podcast that breaks down major health news of the week to help you make sense of it all. If you found this episode helpful, please leave us a rating or review and share it with someone who cares about healthcare policy. And be sure to follow us wherever you get your podcasts. You can find all of GHLF's podcasts at ghlf.org slash listen. I'm Stephen Newmark. We'll see you next time. Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network.